Now, Mid Journey V7 came out just a couple of months ago, back in April, and they made it officially their main model to go to around June or so. So it's been a couple of months since V7 has been out. But in this video, I'm going to go through the key features that you should be wary about so you can get started with Mid Journey and leverage it the best way possible. Now, if you like videos like this, I would appreciate a like. It helps the algorithm push this video out to more people. And make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can plug yourself into AI to be more productive and creative. Just jumping straight into it, one of the main key differences of Mid Journey this time around is its faster speed image generation. And so when you go create an image now, it's far faster than any other models before that. So let's say I'll start prompting a woman standing at the middle of the street in a bustling New York City. So if I hit that, it's going to generate far faster. And you can even toggle this by going to the settings here and then choosing to do either relax, fast, or turbo. So the main difference here is that fast mode uses a lot more GPU. Relax mode obviously is far slower and it may actually take some time to generate an image, but it'll probably use up less credits. And then turbo mode, it's up to four times faster than fast using double the GPU and you will get your image in record speed time. So you see it's generated something quite quickly um, and you can get things far faster than ever before. Now that's not much of a day one, but the next one that I wanna show you is something called draft mode or conversational mode. So if you go up here, you'll notice this little lightning bolt. If you click that and you start to draft something, if I were to create woman standing at the city streets in Dubai, you'll notice that this creates faster as well far faster than even the norm mode. And it'll have a little, little tag here called draft. The thing to note here is that the quality of the image is not gonna be as high as if you were to generate it in a normal mode. So this is mainly used for rapid image prototyping. I wouldn't recommend just relying on these images as your final output. If you do want to use any of these images for your final output, you'll notice when you hover over an image, there's something called enhance. So if you were to click the enhance, then it will generate that image like you would in non-draft mode. So one other cool thing that I really like about draft mode is that if you hit this little button at the top, and hit conversation mode, this little mic will appear. And if you turn this on, you can now speak to Mid Journey and prompt it directly. So I can write something like, a woman standing in the street with a group of monkeys surrounding her. And you see here, it's already generated this image quite quickly based off of the voice commands. And I can even go about adding new things through the voice as well. So I'll turn the mic on once more. Add a couple of fruits to the image. And you see here, I just prompted it to add more fruits. So then it's going to adjust the prompt accordingly, some fruits scattered around to create this new image. If I want to specify on an image out of these four, I can just indicate by saying run a variation of image three. And so now it'll take this image three here and then it'll start generating a variation off of that. And so I can then try this once more. Place the woman inside of a subway. You see, it's a very fast way to draft out your ideas real quick in, and instead of having to type things out, your time to your prompt out, you can just speak to Mid Journey directly. And the beautiful thing about this is it's also multilingual. En mujer está corriendo adentro un apartamento. So I spoke to it in Spanish and now it will add my instructions and actually put place that person in an apartment, which I asked it to do running inside the apartment. And I can even speak to it in Korean as well. So I asked it to add a man and let's see if it goes about doing that and then added a man into the photo as well. So you can see it is multilingual, makes drafting a lot easier. And now you don't have to be limited to just typing on mid journey. 
Another great thing about V7, it's improvements in style references, both in Omni reference and just normal style references. So if I were to show you the website here, they have a lot more styles that you can pull from. Let's say if I were to pull one of these, let's take this little animation style right here. I'm gonna take a screenshot of it, and then I go back to my mid journey. I, add, I drag this into the style references, so you S refs here. I'll take the same prompt and I will press enter and it will take the same image but start to turn it into this specific style reference. And you see the actual image that it pulled was taking this and transform the image into that specific art style that we wanted. And you can do this for a whole plethora of different styles. Now, I mentioned this in another video, but I would recommend going to a great resource called midlibrary.io and you can get a bunch of different artistic styles and style reference codes from this website. This is a fantastic website. I do not have any association to it. I just love going to this website a lot. So I do recommend checking it out if you do have the chance. But on top of that, we do also have Omni References. So Omni References is their way to capture character consistency across the board. So if I were to just go down to some of my previous generations, let's look, let's try to capture a face. I don't know, like this woman. So this woman, I like the way she looks, so I will try to capture her image here. And so I can write another prompt and say, a woman in space eating an apple. And then I can do O-R-E-F -O for this dash dash and then paste in the, the copied URL and it'll put that image, the original image. So what it's going to do here is it's not going to just create any random woman's face, but it's going to reference this woman's face, this picture here. So if I were to press enter, I'll go back up again. Let's look at our most recent example. And while that's loading, you'll take note here that it says something called OW. So this is your Omni weight. So when you're creating image, you can actually adjust the weight of how closely it resembles the original reference point. And so the higher it is, the more likely it's supposed to make that consistent. However, it is recommended by Midjourney that there's no need to go higher than 400. And so I wrote a woman in space eating an apple. It didn't really do a fantastic job in putting this woman in space. However, you can see here the main point of Omni reference is that it's supposed to try to maintain the likeness and character consistency of the original image, which it did a fair job. And so all of the images here have this woman so we'll try to use another example for this as a woman standing in the street while a group of horses pass by her. And then if I were to add the OREF and place that here on the reference, you see this is a little toggle you can manually adjust your Omni weight for. This is at 200. Maybe I keep this at 250. And then I can just press enter. Okay, so now the image has been completed. I have placed this woman in a different environment with a group of horses passing by her. Of course, the horses are not passing by her per se, but the main point of OmniReference once more is to maintain the likeness of the original image, which I think it's done a very fair job at doing, right? And another great change that it's done is its editor. Now, I personally don't use its editor very much, but I do think, let me just zoom out, I do think they've done a better job in making it a lot more user friendly. On the right, you'll have a bunch of your images. You can hit new or you can view all. So if I were to click this, let's just click an example. On the right, you have what looks like your image images that were generated. So it's similar to the rest of Midjourney's overall web interface. And then at the top, you have your prompt. And on the left, you have your little tools that you can use to adjust your image. Now, at the at right here, you have something called Smart Select. And this is one thing that they added to their editor that I really like, where you can hit a specific subject and it'll quickly be able to select that subject that you can either erase from your, from your image or perhaps modify based off of the prompt. And then at the bottom left here, you can also add new layers of images, whether through an URL or from a file, and you can do multi-layered editing. 
which is quite great for mixing and matching different images for collages and so on. You also have this little thing here called suggest prompt, which if you don't, if you're not really sure what prompt to edit up based off, you can just hit this button and it'll give you a suggestion of a prompt you can submit when creating edits to your images. And finally, when we go back to create, the main cool thing that I really like about V7 is now they've added their very first version of video generation. So up till now, Midjourney has just been purely an image generator, but now you have the capability to actually turn your images in, into moving video. And so when you hover over an image, you'll notice this little button here called animate. Now take note, this will only pop up for images that were not created in draft mode. Anything that has draft mode with this little tap tag here, the button for animate will be replaced for enhance. If you were to just click it, you'll then tell Midjourney to automatically animate the image on its own accord. So if I were to hit animate for this, then the AI will do its own job to animate. Now, if you were to click the image itself, on the bottom right here, you're gonna notice the settings for animate images. Now you can either animate manually, which will then give you the ability up here at the top to write in a prompt for inputting your motion prompts. And then you have a starting frame and the ending frame. So what you can do is input two different frames where how you want your video to start and how you want your video to end. And then you can adjust your motion prompt and then create a video. And then you'll notice something here on motion, there is high and low. So main thing about high and low that you need to be wary about is whether or not you want a lot of quick movements in the actual animated video or low. And that's really about it. And you can select this easily at the bottom right. If you were to do by auto, you can do low motion or a high motion. And this really depends on how you really want to go about it. So the video has finished. Let's look at it and you'll see here. Now the woman is taking a bite of the apple. You can see you can bring your images to life and that's quite cool. You can even go about to extending these videos by hitting either extend audio or extend manual. If you were to extend manually, it goes back to manually inputting your prompt or if you were just to extend auto, it'll tell AI to extend the video by four or five seconds more. And so yeah, that is it when it comes to the main features of Midjourney V7. I hope that was helpful. I try to really keep this video shorter and give you guys the main key changes in Midjourney V7 that would be useful for you. I do have a much longer tutorial, especially for beginners, on how to get started with Midjourney. Of course, the interface might look slightly different in that video because it was probably an older version, but there are parts to that video such as how to go about prompting with Midjourney and the different animation and art styles that you can leverage. So I do recommend checking out the video if you're a complete newbie and beginner to Midjourney. And subscribe to this channel if you want to continue plugging yourself into AI for better productivity and creativity.